Hi everyone. Hello. So a different video from us today because we are doing a bit of a perfume book review. Yeah, we've got lots of books on perfume. You've probably seen some of them behind us in our other videos as well. Um, <laughs> and we just thought today that we would pick two mm. of our favourites and talk to you about them. Yeah. Maybe they're ones that you've read already so you can let us know your opinions as well. Mm. Or maybe they're ones that you've thought about buying and weren't really sure if they were for yeah. you. So this will give you a bit more of an idea about what they're about. Exactly. Two different books Very we've chosen different. because I've got a novel. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to talk about Perfume by Patrick Suskind and Sarah's going to talk about A Century of Scents um, by Lizzie is, Ostrom. It's yeah. more like a kind of history of fragrance yeah. book. So um, I'll start with the novel because um, it's the older book as it uh -huh. were. Um, a Century of Sense came out just recently mm -hmm. whereas this has been out I think since the 90s and you may be familiar, there's the, the front of this book, I know it comes in different covers, um, you might be familiar with the film mm. because they made a film of this book in I think 2000 and something with Dustin Hoffman and Alan Rickman so you, even if you haven't read the book you might, you've seen the film yeah. haven't you? Um, but I always like, I love reading and I always quite like if I'm going to watch a film to read the book mm. first. Um, and I think this book is absolutely amazing. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's quite disturbing. Um, the whole title is Perfume, the Story of a Murderer. So you can see where him, he's going with this. It's going to be quite a dark, um, sort of twisted tale. Um, and it's fascinating because it really, the way that Suskind writes, he describes scent in mm -hmm. glorious and gruesome detail, so much so that you feel like in your mind's eye you're suddenly transported mm -hmm. to 18th century France, which is where the book is set. I mean, I'll just give you an example of the kind of, of descriptive words. This is literally the first page. He says about Paris, the stench of sulphur rose from the chimneys, the stench of caustic liars from the tanneries and from the slaughterhouses came the stench of congealed blood. People stank of sweat and unwashed clothes. From their mouths came the stench of rotting teeth. From their bellies, that of onions. And from their bodies, if they were no longer very young, came the stench of rancid cheese and sour milk. Wow. <laughs> Which I know is it's quite disgusting. disgusting. <laughs> but suddenly you're thinking that you're right in that, mm. mar that fish market where the main character, Grenoui, John Baptiste Grenoui, was born. And the remarkable thing about his main character is that, yes, he's quite a sinister, um, loner character, mm -hmm. but he's like that because he has no smell of his own. He discovers through his life that, that, that he doesn't have a mm. human smell, and yet he possesses this unbelievable quality with his nose to be able to identify mm. um, every single smell that's ever been. And he kind of becomes a, a, an obsessed collector and hunter of these mm. different smells. Um, so like, for example, he says um, at one point, uh, oh, I can't find it now. <laughs> Um, so he he sort of is described as somebody who doesn't care whether it's the smell of a of a horse or a smell of a, a rose garden. He just wants to possess these smells so much so that he ends up killing these beautiful girls because he wants to possess their scent, um, and that's how the story unfolds. Um, and eventually, he wants to be able to create his own smell. Um, and it, he says um, later on in the book. He now knew what he was capable of. Thanks to his own genius, he had imitated the odour of human beings. He knew, though, he could improve on this scent. He would be able to create a scent that was not merely human, but superhuman. An angel scent so indescribably good and vital that whoever smelled it would be enchanted. So it's almost like he ends up sort of wanting to search for love mm. because he needs to fool people into thinking that he is somebody he's not by mm. making a scent for himself. It's quite fascinating. Mm. Really a story of identity as much as giving you an insight into perfume. And, and he goes to Grasse and he goes to Montpellier and you really learn through the book all these secrets of scent manufacture in the 1700s. Yeah. Very interesting. 
Yeah. Um, the book that I've got is quite different, and as we said, it's called A Perfume A Century, Perfume A Century of Scents by Lizzie Ostrom. It's really beautiful, isn't it? It's that? a really nice the, um, the cover. cover. And everything, yeah. yeah. Um, this came out just before last Christmas, so it was a perfect Christmas present for last year. I think a lot of people got it. Um, and Lizzie, um, if you don't know who Lizzie is, and um, she's also known sometimes as Odette Toilette, yeah. which is like the best name ever for someone who works in perfume. Good name, um, Lizzie. <laughs> And she um, is, I don't know what you'd call her, like a perfume She's an expert, expert especially yeah. on yeah. history of yeah. fragrance. Like, she knows a lot. So mm. this, book, this book works so well. I particularly love it because, honestly, I'm not the biggest reader. <laughs> I'm, I, I don't read that much, and I find a lot of perfume books very heavy yeah. um, and kind of hard to read technical, you know, kind of things. So what she's done with this is she's literally done a chapter for each 10 years, so starting from 1900 up to pretty much the present day. Yeah. Um, and then within each chapter of that century, she's picked 10 fragrances to talk about. Mm. And each fragrance has like two or three pages, so it's so easy. So I'll show you, for example, this is um, Giorgio Beverly Hills from um, 1981. And so she writes a couple of pages on the fragrance. She does an illustrator who does an illustration of the fragrance. And then she has a name that she kind of coins for the yeah. fragrance. So, it's for example, nice. for this one, she calls it the banned perfume because it was banned <laughs> in certain restaurants and offices and things because it, it was so was strong. So strong. Yeah. yeah, I remember Giorgio Beverly Hills yeah. just being completely overpowering, but very of that period. Yeah, so she writes really well in a very accessible um, way. You didn't have to be a complete perfume fanatic to understand okay. her writing. So, for example, I'll read you a bit that she wrote about Mitsuku, um, because Mitsuku is a classic Ooh. that a lot of people know. Um, and what she said is, um, the fragrance starts with a mossy scratchiness, like a sore throat in smell form, which over the hours becomes its own lozenge remedy of soothing honeyed fruits. Patience is amply rewarded. Mitsuku's dying hours are so beautiful that some might wish there was a pause button. <laughs> Others might not. Every perfume has its haters and that is just fine. Um, so yeah, I just I really like her writing. And what she does well is, as well as just writing about the perfume, she combines other elements like um, what was going on in the world at that time yeah. that that perfume launched. And also, particularly, she talks a lot about how um, fragrance houses launched their fragrances with like PR stunts and stuff. Like there's this one called Black Satin by Angelique from 1946. And she goes on and she tells this whole story that she's obviously researched mm. from the press at the time about how they tried to launch the fragrance by getting this whole squad of women to fly planes across America and drop dry ice out of the planes wow, that was fragranced with the perfume. That is a PR and stunt. <laughs> I think it was a complete flop because by the time this dry ice got to the <laughs> ground, people were just like... What, what the hell is this? <laughs> you know, and it didn't smell particularly nice and it didn't really work. But the stories are so funny. She has a really good sense of humour um, and I really, really enjoy it. So it would be a great book for anyone that's into perfume or anyone that's even just got a small interest yeah, in, in perfume or in history it's one of the those last nice, hundred years. Um, coffee table books. Yeah, it makes a lovely present. So mm -hmm. yeah, really enjoyed um, that book. Okay, so hopefully um, you enjoyed hearing about our reviews of those two. Please do comment and tell us what perfume books you enjoy um, and if you've got any recommendations for us. Yeah. Um, and if you like these kind of videos, give us a thumbs up um, and let us know and we'll do some more. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you all soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.